Hello! In this video we are going to answer one question we are often asked about. If you install fuel level sensors on the same vehicles with the same fuel tanks, do you need to calibrate each tank? The answer usually here is that you have to calibrate each tank to get good accuracy. This is easy to do if you have an automatic calibration station like the one in the photo. If you don't have it, such tip is not easy to follow. Tank calibration at petrol stations takes time and strains the nerves of yours and your customer. Let's take a closer look at what tank calibration gives us. The calibration results in the following table. If you plot these values on a graph, where the detector values are plotted on x-axis and the fuel volume in the tank on y-axis, you get a graph like this. The x-axis detector values are a property of a sensor and depend on the level of filling the sensor with fuel and also on the length of the sensor. One of the reasons why it is common to recalibrate each tank is that the sensors have individual differences in the detector values and it is hardly possible to trim the sensors in the same way. Then, if you simply clone this calibration table into another sensor, you get the following. The real value of the empty and full detector does not match the table loaded into the sensor, and you get a dead zone in an empty or full tank. What can be done about it? The solution is quite simple. You need to expand the calibration table between the new full and empty detector values. This can be done in Excel, and we have already added this tool to the new Eurosense Dominator configurator, and now you don't need to think about calculations. The next issue is that the fuel tanks only look the same. If you fill them up to the maximum, the first tank holds 180 liters, the second 192 liters, the third 178 liters, and so on. Why is it so? It happens that the tanks have different length, width, or height. The shape of the tank is conveyed by the calibration curve. What happens if the tank is 3 mm longer? The gauge curve will stretch upwards so that the top point coincides with the increased tank volume. What if the tank is 3 mm narrower? The calibration curve has to be compressed. What if the tank is 3 mm higher? You might get a slightly longer sensor. We have already considered this. And you need to stretch the curve so that the last point on y-axis, which is the volume, matches the value of the new tank volume. You can do that too with the new Eurosense Dominator configurator. Our tank was 212 liters. The new tank is 222 liters. Stretch the calibration curve and save it to the new sensor. So, if you have 10 identical cars with identical tanks, you can calibrate only one of them. Next, do the following. Calibrate each sensor after trimming to find out the detector values for a full and an empty tank. Fill each tank completely to find out the exact volume of each tank. Load the calibration curve into the calibration curve editor. Use the left and right arrows of the editor to move the points of empty and full detector to new values. Use up and down arrows to move full tank point to new value. The calibration curve is ready. Now you can save it to the new sensor. Will the final calibration be accurate? Yes, if the tanks are of the same shape. This method should not be used if you can see the differences in the tank roundings, convex surfaces, or if the tank is skewed. Take advantage of the smart features of Eurosense sensors and subscribe to our Telegram news channel.